In Shenzhen's urban village of Shangmeilin, tucked down an unassuming little alley, there's my favorite restaurant in the whole city. It's a Sichuan joint, and while all their food's great, their specialty is Douhua Fan, which is a southern Sichuan classic. What you're looking at is some freshly made firm Douhua, eaten together with a special sort of chili sauce. That sauce isn't just the standard fare. It's packed with chili, spices, herbs, then smothered over the tofu and downed with rice. So if you happen to know anyone out there that's still a tofu skeptic, this dish would definitely make them a convert. So today, we wanted to show you how to make your own Douhua Fan. Now, word of warning that this is undeniably a more intense one. We'll show you how to make your own Sichuan-style Douhua from scratch. Then also show you how to make that chili sauce, which isn't exactly quick and easy either. Good news is, though, that this by itself can feed a family. And if you do make it, you'll be rewarded with what might be one of the tastiest dishes we've done on this channel yet. So right, to get started with your Sichuan tofu rice, you'll need soybeans. This was 500 grams of dried soybeans. But before you do anything, be sure to pick out any blackened or moldy beans. If you happen to watch our how to make soy milk video, this is all pretty much the same process. Give those a thorough rinse, then fill your bowl with water a couple inches above the soybeans and let those soak in the fridge overnight. Now for the chili paste. The specific type of paste that's used for our sauce is called xiang la jiang. Now, unfortunately, I don't think this stuff's available in the West. If you can find some, feel free to use it. It'll definitely save you some work. That said, homemade is best, and all the Doha restaurants in Sichuan will make their own. So if you do go from scratch, you'll be in good company. So take 30 grams of chilies. These were Sichuan Argentiao chilies, but feel free to use arbols or cayennes. No need to deseed, just take off any large stems then reconstitute those with hot, boiled water. After about an hour of soaking, they should be soft and pliable like this. So strain and toss in a large mortar. Pound those for about 5-10 to 10 minutes until it's looking pretty pasty. Then add in 5 tablespoons of Sichuan chili bean paste, together with a half teaspoon of salt, and pound for another 5 minutes. You could also use a food processor for this too. Just make sure that you don't go too fine with it. You're looking for something about this consistency in the end. And now, to fry that paste. So in a cool wok or a cast iron pot, toss in a half a cup of oil. Soybean oil is traditional here, but you could also use peanut. With the heat still off then, add in your chili paste and turn the flame to medium low. Our goal here is to fry this paste till dry, which takes a while. So buckle in, keep that moving so it doesn't burn, and after about 10 minutes you should see your chilies deepen in color and start to resemble a bit of a paste. But we're still only about halfway there. As you continue to cook it, the oil will start to absorb, the chilies will begin to dry and crisp, and you'll get this whole nice toasted smell. You'll know the chilies are done once they sound sort of like packing sand, something a bit like this. Now set that aside, and we'll come back to it in a second. Now for our spices, we'll first grind up a half a teaspoon of fennel seed, eight white cardamom pods, and just skip those if you can't find them, two star anise, 4 grams of sand ginger, and you could just sub that with dried galangal, and 1 teaspoon of white pepper. Grind those into a powder, and we'll give those a fry. So get another half a cup of soybean or peanut oil up to smoke point, then wait a minute or two until it's down to about 185, then toss in your spices. Now traditionally in Sichuan, they'd actually just soak whole spices in cool oil for about 4 or 5 days. Forgive our shortcut, but I promise this totally works. Now just add that spice oil to your chili paste, give it a mix, box it up, and leave that to sit at least overnight. Next day now, we'll make our tofu. Your soybeans should be nice and plump at this point. Strain, then add those to a blender. The ratio that we're working with here is 8 parts water to 1 part soybean, so 4 liters of water in all. Of course, unless you happen to own an industrial sized blender, you will need to do this in batches. We did 3 in all, just blend each on high for 4 minutes, using the smoothie setting if you've got one. Then transfer over to a large wok or stock pot, and we're ready to make some tofu. So step one to making homemade tofu is making soy milk. As we discussed in our soy milk video, soybeans contain proteins called lectins, which can cause food poisoning if not cooked out. So over high heat, we've got to get this up to 100 degrees Celsius. For this, it really helps to have a thermometer handy, because often soy milk will look like it's boiling when it's really just frothing. So once it's come up to temperature, swap the flame down to medium high and continue to cook. In the last soy milk video, there were a number of people that were really perturbed by our scooping out of the excess foam. So if that describes you, just know that you can alternatively prevent overflowing by obsessively ladling soy milk over the foam. 
Now after 15 minutes at that temperature, the soy milk's good to go, so strain that through a tofu or cheesecloth. One of these cool tofu bags is ideal because we've got like a lot of soy milk to work through. Then twist up the bag and squeeze to get every last drop, pressing for about three minutes, MacGyvering some solutions if need be. Add that all back to a large pot, and then for step two, coagulation. Now there's two primary tofu coagulants, gypsum, which makes for silken tofu, and nigari, which makes for regular tofu. We're gonna use nigari here. This stuff's magnesium chloride and also called yen lu in Mandarin. So in a non-reactive bowl, add in 10 grams worth together with 20 grams of water and set that aside. Now get your soy milk back up to 90 centigrade. Optimal temperature for working with nigari is between 85 and 90. So then just shut off the heat and start to spoon in your mixture. Go in five grams at a time, give the soy milk a quick stir, and do this three times total. After the third time, you should start to feel a little bit of resistance when mixing. So then spoon only two grams in at a time and just spread it over the surface. We're doing this in stages because depending on how much your soy milk reduced during cooking, you'll likely need a little more or a little less coagulant. What you're looking for is the soy milk to form little popcorn sized solids. At that point, you'll stop. And for reference, here we use 23 grams in all. Now what you're looking at here is some areas that are good and done and some that aren't. Clear water means that part's ready. So take some of that water and pour it over the remaining areas. After a few minutes, your spatula should be able to lay on top of everything without sinking. So to press, we'll be using this little bamboo basket. It'd be best if it had a flat bottom, but this is what we have. So place the basket over the tofu. It'll start to sink in and you can ladle out some of the liquid. Now, if you don't have this exact sort of tofu basket, feel free to get creative. Something like a fine mesh sieve should be able to do a passable job as well. Once your basket stops sinking by itself, you can press down on it, but gently, with about as much force as you'd massage your eyelid with. No need to ladle out any more liquid at this point. Just keep on pressing until it's firm to your liking, about 10 minutes more. Now just slice that into pieces, and we'll finish up with the sauce. So for that sauce, for each serving, we'll be using two teaspoons of our homemade Xianglajiang chili sauce, about a half a teaspoon of minced garlic, sliced scallions, and chopped cilantro, a sprinkle of MSG to balance the heat, a half a tablespoon of soy sauce, a sprinkle of toasted sesame seeds, and a couple drops of something that I know you can't buy, mujiangzi oil. Mujiangzi oil is made using the seeds of a variety of litsia tree. The flavor is super similar to lemongrass though, so just use a drop or two of lemongrass oil instead. So in a little bowl, add in a half teaspoon of salt together with the rest of the ingredients and the sauce is good to go. Now just take your tofu, toss in a bowl and eat that along with your sauce and rice, drinking the tofu liquid as a soup. This stuff is crazy addictive and it's probably my favorite tofu dish on the planet. So there are as many kinds of like uh, doufa dipping sauce as there are doufa restaurants. Uh, this is a copycat of our favorite restaurant in Shenzhen. They are from Luzhou, Sichuan. And one signature ingredient in the Luzhou Douhua dipping sauce is uh, Mu Jiangzi oil. This is widely used in Southwest China. Um, got a really fresh fragrance and really reminds you of lemongrass. Great ingredient. So check out the red link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon and of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.